everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Devs Like Us podcast show. How is everyone doing today? Doing well. I'm here. You guys, I like it's just been a bland day. I mean, we just went through a tropical storm. I mean, yeah, but it came and it went. And then it turned into a beautiful morning. <laughs> yeah, the sun came out pretty bright right afterwards. It was it was right shaky first thing, but uh, it cleared out pretty fast. Yeah, it was a weird moment where I actually thought like, oh, this is the hard part about to come at two o'clock. <laughs> and then I looked on the weather channel, it was already like passed over us. So it's a yeah, blessing. It Not, no, no complaints. No complaints. You, no complaints. How you doing? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm um just had you know wedding anniversary this past weekend, so happy cool. anniversary. Got got some got some thank you, thank you. Got some cool uh technology hardware, you know. Got me a, <laughs> a new mic, so excited about that. Okay. Heard I'm not the only one that bought some technology. About, you know, you're an adult when you're excited about a new mic. I'm just saying. Yeah, that's true. That's yeah. true. Sure. What's the difference between that and like a video game? It's just it's still electronics. So how, the question is, how many times have you recorded yourself singing, or did you come right. up with a rap name? Okay, that so now that's that's leaning towards JB's point because I really haven't. I used I tested it like once for like a second, and then it was like, yep. okay, I'm good. You just kind of did a testing, testing. <laughs> that <laughs> was it. Back, it was like, all right, that sounds good. That sounds good. That's it. Yeah. Between this mic and the old mic, so yeah, I think it's, I think it's pretty good. You know, maybe if we get enough episodes in, uh, uh, the blue folks will send um send everybody a mic. Send you guys hey, a mic. Hey, that's what I'm talking about. Right? <laughs> Speaking into existence. <laughs> blue mics that's what I'm come talking on. about. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, I'm not the only one that got some new technology, right? Didn't didn't somebody order a new laptop? Oh. <laughs> You know, no. <laughs> drop drop a couple K on a laptop. No, big girl purchase. <laughs> now that's an adult. <laughs> yeah, that that really was an adult purchase. Uh, had me contemplating life. It's like, I mean, we can do it. It won't won't set us back, but it's just. Yeah, so did, did it feel? Did you did you get a window or did you get some fruit? You know what which which where which, which side you mean? I got mean? some fruit. Some I got fruit. Some fruit. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah, they're probably not gonna send us a laptop for. Uh, no. <laughs> for I doubt they're gonna send us a laptop. <laughs> He's like, shout out to them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice did job. You, did you feel the experience was different now? You know, getting getting yourself a new laptop versus like you know you're looking for like in college. Um. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I mean, you know. I think so, I just heard, did you say looking for a college or looking for one? No, when, looking for you when college. you were in college. Yeah. When oh, you were I thought you were about to say wow. you know, a similar process of looking for your college. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> not at all. Um, it was it was different because uh, in college <clears throat> I was looking for one because um, I came to college with one that um, was purchased for me. So um, there was no um, decision on, you know, all the specs that came with that first laptop. But the one that I bought while I was in college was more of a, this is an emergency, I need a laptop and I'm on a college student budget. So um, as long as they got enough space and can run my programs, I was like, that's it. Whereas now I'm like, be Don't real, JB. Be real, JB. You didn't have any music on that thing. You didn't need to run your music. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that. I mean, that's a given. Like, no matter <laughs> what laptop I buy, I got it. I got to have the music with it. Um, but for this laptop, it was more of uh, processors, uh, how much RAM I'm gonna get, how much um, you know storage space, and all that stuff. Uh, so yeah, um, I'm excited about the purchase. Uh, you know still in the process of like getting used to the fact that I just spent that much money on a laptop. And you don't like, even have it yet. Right. It's like I still gotta wait a couple weeks. So shipping is horrible at the moment, man. Yeah. Like yeah. I've I've ordered unless you have like Prime, even Amazon has like padding like the delivery time for stuff. Um 
I, I put one thing I tried to get for the anniversary, and it was like, yeah, be here in September. I'm like, oh, that was depressing. <laughs> like the end of <laughs> September. <laughs> Yeah, um, so. But yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, with that purchase came AirPods. And so, I mean, oh. I put my order in yesterday. They were here today. So um, it's a lot easier for you to get those to come in than for sure. the entire laptop. So. Yeah, True. they're everywhere now. So. Yeah, for sure. So Clarence, any new any new tech buys? You know, or or, or are we just testing out Somebody, new bait for the fish? To- <laughs> Somebody got a new yeah. birthday tech buy. <laughs> I dig. Yeah, my latest. Well, I got a gift, uh, GoPro, uh, so that I could record my adventures. And uh, funny enough, uh, the adventure that I went on, I made a rookie mistake and uh, forgot to charge it. So I missed <laughs> a lot of good footage for a potential YouTube channel, but. Uh, you know, there's always, you know, I learned from my mistakes, so I won't do that again. <laughs> well, that's breaking news right here, everyone. Uh, Clarence will have another YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm going solo. <laughs> going solo. He's already turning to Beyonce. That's that. <laughs> it's like what y'all do here is cool and all, but uh, <laughs> I need my own space. I need my own shining light. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, turned into Eddie Kane. Those are cool. Those are cool. But, all right. So what we have this this episode? So we have soft skills, right? Mm-hmm. So um, you know, a lot of we've talked about a number of things so far. You know, by this episode. So um, one thing that is underestimated from a lot of uh, tech positions are, um, of course, soft skills. So when we're saying soft skills, we're talking about you know those personal attributes that enable someone to interact effectively and um, with other people and 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 those non uh technical by bi- non-binary type of <laughs> of 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 things you know so from a technical standpoint for sure we uh tend to have an easier time being able to have a problem knowing like there's an exact solution to that problem but people on the other hand are complicated and the things surrounding soft skills are are really the interaction and how we interact with people and um, I guess those the different uh, methods of interacting with folks. So, um, so the episode today is soft skills. And anybody have any opening statements they would like to to start off with when it comes to soft skills? Um, just kind of piggyback on your statement of people being complicated. Um, many different people have uh, different listening skills. Uh, well. Um, different ways that they interpret things. Um, And so having the ability to adapt to those, you know, on the fly as you go, because you can explain something to one person and they think pretty closely to the same way that you do. And so they're going to pick it up just fine. Someone else can be in the office and they're just like, yeah, I don't get it. And so you have to take that time to adapt to that person to help them understand, which also helps you in a sense of being able to tell your story in multiple ways of, you know, the development that you're working on. So, yeah. I like it. I like it. Yeah, I think soft skills pretty much, you know, sum up that, you know, the human as as a whole is complex, you know, Uh, because as Jasmine said, you know, uh, Everybody has their way of uh, interpreting everything, and sometimes it goes good, sometimes it goes bad. You know, you just never know the person that you're talking with, uh, how they'll grab it, which is that. Are y'all still there? I'm still here. Do you guys see anything? No, not yet. Uh, (laughs) I figured you were trying to share your screen, but it just... It threw me oh. off. I was like, <laughs> what did it do? It, it threw me off too. <laughs> did it do anything? No. No. It just went black. Oh wow. Yeah, I was about to say. I think you got to pick. Yeah. Do you see it now? Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry, Clarence. I still can't see it. No, you're good. Oh, uh, it's probably because you're on your phone, right? But JB, can you see it? Loud and clear. Okay. Oh, here we go. Now it goes. You all, you just witnessed Devs Like Us first screen share. <laughs> <laughs> We're graduating. And now Clarence is blue. Oh, hold on. You I'm can be blue my, for a little I'm bit. I'm going to switch my camera. As there long you. as you don't 
live in the blue space, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I guess I need to describe this lovely chart uh, that JB sent to us uh, for the podcast listeners. But basically, there's 10 um, different points uh, that they have here for um, for uh, uh, soft skills, for developer soft skills. So we have one with teamwork. Well, uh, will they um, contribute and strengthen um, existing teams? Two, we have patience. Can they explain technical concepts patiently? consistently and simply. Uh, for three, we have organization. Can they balance multiple projects with conflicting pressures? Four, we have flexibility. How will they react to the circumstances that are out of their control? Mm -hmm. Five, we have communication. Could they successfully explain delays to clients and teams, uh, decisions to the CTO, the chief technical officer? All right, and then for six, we have feedback. Can they give constructive feedback and take it? Seven, we have accountability. Are they prepared to take uh, responsibility for their mistakes? Eight, we have drive. Do they have the drive to, uh, to requ and require uh, the drive required to learn new technologies? Nine, we have listening. Uh, would they be prepared to clarify something they uh, mis uh, misheard? Um, Ten, we have focus. An example of that is, you know, coding requires focus and uh, dedication. Um, do they have what it takes? So that's a lot there. This is the perfect um uh, candidate. That's basically what this is. Um and I mean these are definite things that, you know, since I've been in the workforce for, for a few years that um I see these on a day to day basis while being at work. Um because I've seen where teamwork can fail because you have that one person that's just like, well, no, I'm just going to do it, um, as opposed to spreading out things. Um, and sometimes as a developer, uh, we have those moments where we're like, this is so cool, I want to do everything. Um, but it, for the sake of the company and time and deadlines and all that, that all those things, um, you actually have to take that back seat and put the ego aside and say, all right, we need to split this up uh, in a smart fashion and play off of each other's uh, strengths and things um, when it comes to the teamwork. So, um, so yeah, I'll speak to that when I'll let you guys, you know, continue down the list and we'll go around the room. I'll say uh, to add on to the whole teamwork thing, that's a tough one because, you know, when you get, uh, hired on to a company you don't or just a project in itself you know you have no idea how everybody functions as a team and you're kind of put you know kind of forced to make it work in some cases and you know with different personalities and different uh people's strengths you know sometimes you end up on a team where you know you have too many uh what it what do they call it too many chiefs not enough indians mm -hmm. and so too many cooks in the kitchen yeah, sure. yeah, too many cooks in the in the kitchen for sure, you know. So you end up not making the the dish that you want. <laughs> yeah, and um, and what's so what's a different way of looking at like the team the teamwork aspect is that like everyone on the, on the team, all of them are at different levels of all ten that are listed on here. Everyone on the team has a different level of patience. Everyone on the team has a different level of organization, and so on. So. I think that's one of the the things that make teams strong because, you know, you can lean on different folks uh, strength um, when it comes to being a team uh, rather than, you know, being on your own and having to just depend on yourself. But it also makes things a little complex. You know, when you're speaking to person A, you know, they they might have a different level of drive where you need to, you know, be able to provide a number of, of, of different taskings or no, or a, a more uh, detail to the tasking for that person. Mm -hmm. And then a uh, person where a person, the, uh, person B has, you know, they're self-motivated, they're going, even though we want everyone to be self-motivated, there's, there's levels to that. Right. Yeah. And um, so like, especially uh, like flexibility, different people have different things going on outside of work where they might need, a, you know, different levels of flexibility. So, uh, I think teamwork, that's great that they started that out with number one because I really do feel like the other nine definitely um, everyone, yeah, everyone, everyone, everyone else has different levels 
um they're at different levels of that and you need to like basically have that in your mind we do it like unconsciously we know when we're talking to people who are like the good listeners and who are who's not right so and who communicates in certain ways and who communicates in in different ways so um so yeah i think teamwork is definitely a good one and patience for sure like patience is to me is important because uh, especially with um, onboarding new uh, developers or new team members to uh, to your project, you you have to have uh, you know patience and be able to also use a number of these other skills to be able to make sure that they have a good tra- trajectory and that they're on the right track uh, to be able to become you know a strong team member. Because whenever a, a new team member comes on, regardless of how great they are, you know, there's going to have to be a level of patience for them to be able to ramp up and be with everyone else. Yeah, I was going to say your um, you talking about teamwork and how everything plays into it um, really is a good segue into patience because uh, like patience is needed for all of this um, because uh, like we've already stated, there are people at various levels. And so you have to have the patience to, you know, be willing to explain those things to the people who may not be at the same level than you, as you, but also have the patience to be willing to listen to the people who may be at a level that's above you. Um, and so it's a twofold situation. For sure. So do, just, a, just a curious question, do any of these 10, do you all feel would make you stand out, you know, having uh, stand out more than the others in your team as far as like, having one of these or do you think you need to have like all of these to be able to stand out because i know one of the questions we had where we wanted to make sure that we answer it is how how does soft skills make you stand out uh from everyone else um i'll say that it's important to have all of them but i would say the to me the most important would be um your communication skills your listening skills um Definitely your drive and don't do it, JV. Don't try to make one of these more important than the other. <laughs> Teamwork. Um, so you definitely need to have. You definitely, like, you, you definitely you know. need to have them all. But yeah, um, I, I'll just give you a hard time. I would have said the same thing. Right, I was like, actually about to say the same thing, and I was like, "Oh, I can't say that." It's like, yeah, I agree with you too. Um, but no, um, just because can of the fact play, that right? can we do it, that though? What are if you had to take five to be your strongest? What would it be, JB? That's so um, hard. Oh, that's hard. Communication, that's hard. listening, teamwork, patience, and accountability. So yeah, communication, listening, teamwork, patience, and, and accountability. Accountability. So you might necess- not necessarily have to give feedback all the time, but that's still it. Like it's important. But okay, yeah. I see. See, I feel like my little twist to it is that unrealistically, you need all you need to be strong in all of them to really For stand sure. out. Um, I think, you know, having one without the other, it might it might work in a team where somebody else might have the other that you don't have. You know, so maybe that kind of helps keep a balance when it comes to, you know, the main one that they have, you know, quote unquote for teamwork. Um but well, yeah, five I think you have. If you have to be strong, it's at five. What would it be? For me, it would be probably communication, flexibility, patience. Uh, did I say listening? <laughs> no, not yet. <laughs> I, I put, so now you're I put, I put listening up there, and I'll definitely say teamwork. I think I could do pretty good at that one. Yeah. I think I you most definitely have to have teamwork. Unless, okay. Like even if you're a beast and you're work like look at the greatest founders of all time, like within the tech space, they've had to have a team, right? And it's True. like unless you like I don't see how you can be successful in any level or any capacity without having teamwork for sure. Mm-hmm. I think and, it teamwork kind of goes with uh, sports, you know. You kind of see it in, in the sports world that and, and to be successful, you have to work as a team, and I yeah. think that that incorpor- you know that kind of trades off to the corporate world too. Right, and so and I think if you have like really strong teamwork, there's no way you don't have some form of all of these others. Yeah, for sure. 
And then I have to say drive because if you have no drive like that, you're basically not not working. Like I feel like teamwork and drive have to be up there. And I feel like you have to have patience because then it's like I don't but know. But you just said that you know, for the drive, you you're giving people you know a certain set of tasks and milestones to help drive their um, their drive. Um, <laughs> drive their drive. <laughs> I feel like drive is can, drive can be conflicting because if if everybody got drive and nobody listens, I don't think you're gonna get anything <laughs> done. <laughs> and I don't even so like we're never gonna get anything. <laughs> Just sitting here arguing all the time. You know so, what yeah. I picture? A student driver. You know, you got two wheels and two, uh, and y'all are both trying to steer. Like, no, we're going this way. They're like, no, we're going that way. Like, the that's gas what I kind of see. On both sides. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but for me, I think drive is that acceleration. It's not even like navigating, like like turning anywhere. It's just like accelerating, like going, <laughs> like True. getting up and go. But um, well, but yeah. then you have the overzealous person. Oh who, yeah, right. can mess it's, you up. Yeah, and like, they're the, they're that person that's like, let's say you have a customer, and they're the person that's uh, communicating with your customer. If their drive is just way too high, they could be overpromising to your customer, which oh, then I've hurts been, you. I've been around that person. Oh yeah, my god! That. Like we both yeah. right into person. the ocean. <laughs> right. <Yeah>. <laughs> no breaks. <laughs> <laughs> that's, so so, that's kind of why I didn't list it in my top five. Um, and for everything that I didn't list in my top five, which was um, flexibility, focus, drive. Uh, patience and feedback. Um, the reason I didn't list those is because I feel like those are more of, of like they're good to have, but I feel like to really be good at them, that's more of a manager or supervisor type of soft skill to have. True. Uh, and True. so that's that's why I didn't list them um, because if you have most of your developers with my top five, and then you're a manager with all the five that I didn't list, then you kind of have that good balance between manager and um, employees. That's True. a good point. That's a good point. See, I thought of something. See, now, I, you know, oh. your, your main question, your main <laughs> question was, how do you stand out? And I think the perfect way to stand out is being strong in all of them and being able to know when you need to apply each one to a different situation. For sure. True. True. That might be uh, textbook reply. The answer to that answer. Yeah, that that was definitely an interview answer. Um, <laughs> you know, when they, it's when a no from experience. Like, what are your strengths and weaknesses? Glenn's like, no, we don't have any weaknesses. We got to be good at all of them, uh, straight yeah. across the board. My weaknesses are my strengths. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but there's definitely no right answer as far as like just picking five. But I probably yeah. would have definitely left feedback off. Out of mm -hmm. all these, even though it's yeah. important, and like, feedback, yeah, feedback is like nonverbal too. Like even though, like not this example, feedback is like feedback is also like when somebody tells you something that you might not like to hear or is critical of you, and yeah. how are you responding to that? And I kind of lumped that one in with listening, for sure. Yeah, because if you if you're if you're sitting like those faces, like you have those resting faces that people talk about, you know that. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah. uh, and uh, and like people like those are saying a lot of words without you saying anything. That's a form. Mm -hmm. That's definitely a form of feedback and like, yeah. like mannerisms and like how you hold and conduct yourself, even when you're not saying things. Sometimes yeah. it's just as important as what you say as well, for sure. Nonverbal communication will get you every time. You so, know, I think, yeah. Go ahead, Clarence. I was like, so technically, do you think, I mean, listening to what you just said, do you think feedback should be like one of your stronger ones then? I guess like, because, you know, you got to be able to, uh, I guess like you got to be able to read the room. Because mm -hmm. I think a lot of people, a lot of people that do give feedback, you know, I, there is, you know, constructive criticism, but then there are some people that are super just, you know, uh, aggressive when it comes to feedback. Yeah. So do you think that you should work on that one? Is, should that be, you know, I know it's, I don't even know if these are like labeled in order, but, you know, do you think that should be like a top one that you should definitely, you know, focus on? 
if we're talking nonverbal feedback, as far as like your facial expressions and stuff, for sure, because especially like business meetings <laughs> or true. meetings with meetings with custom like uh, like uh, customers, if like you're uh, if you're a product owner and you're like meeting with customers or you're, you're you're getting feedback from customers, you definitely need to be able to like. To me, feedback is it's almost like you have to have the patience to have that good nonverbal feedback because if you're emotional about things and you're showing everything on your face, that can lose, that could be a million dollar decision. Cause if you upset customers or <laughs> investors and not have like, and you're showing like crazy uh, facial expressions, then like that, that could hurt in a lot of ways too. True, um, true. But I, it's still kind of, it's still for me. And like I said, I think it's all in the right you have to use them be strongest um at at all of them at the right time for sure um but i think teamwork be i think teamwork definitely is number one on here for a reason um and i don't know if they're in any particular order or not but the fact that it's first i think that that was there was some thought put into that yeah um true yeah. teamwork makes the world go around yep. it's teamwork. also keeping us in a pandemic <laughs> Didn't want to go there, but I thought I had to drop it. Yeah, <laughs> I had to drop it. This team project is failing. <laughs> JB, can, can you all see my face? Did you see how was I on my nonverbal feedback on uh, Clarence's uh, statement? I missed it. Oh, yeah, yeah, I missed it. Yeah, I don't I even know if you guys too. can see me since I'm sharing my screen. This is our first screen share with this software. You're a little small I bubble, so. Um, and I think I think you're covered up because on my end there's these like little square things in front of your kind of like at the bottom of your screen, so I can't see. Oh uh, yeah, the screen share. I, uh, uh, that's what, what it is. But, but, but you can see the image good though, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right, all right. So I'm gonna let the screen this screen go. Anything else you guys want to share from this from this uh, lovely diagram uh, that uh, JB provided? There's a uh, lot to go on. I mean, I we could talk for hours on this because. All right, let's get one just point out of this. Let's get one but, point out of this. Um, this was nice, though. Point. I like this. I might actually like. Yeah, you should print this out and post it on your wall. Oh, welcome back, guys. Look at that. Hey, I can see you all. Now, what was that face you made so we can see if we, you know, we can actually read it? <laughs> 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 uh, go yeah, back and do exactly what you did last time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sorry. All right, y'all. How can you improve your soft skills? How can we do it? Um, for improvement, I would say um, just being open to talking to more people more often um, because uh, that gives you a lot more practice. And observing the people that you feel comfortable with at work. Um, because if a person at work makes you feel comfortable, then it's likely that they're making other people feel comfortable. That's not saying take their complete style that they have of communication and, you know, focus and all those things, but, you know, you just pick out the certain things that you like about it. Um, and then just be willing to take classes because there are classes on these things. There are books that you can read on these things. And so just w be willing to do the work. So, yeah. yeah, I think uh, if you kind of do like a self-assessment of what, you know, what we presented and, you know, kind of sit and reflect on, you know, where where do you stand on each one? Uh, that definitely kind of would help. Um, and like as Jasmine said, you know, re reaching out, finding somebody that you're comfortable with, because sometimes, you know, you might need somebody to tell you because, you mm -hmm. know, you you might get to yourself and get full of yourself and, you know, might say, oh, yeah, I'm a, I work great in teams. And you know your peer and everybody might say, on the team is just like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> have, you ever, have you seen Jim over there? He does like this weird thing when he's, <laughs> and he's like, what? Weird? He does good. <laughs> yeah, he just. <laughs> but um, I was about to go on something, but yeah, but um, <laughs> I was about to go on all. <laughs> um, but spill um, the beans, no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> But yeah, there, I mean, what I was trying to say, but yeah, for sure, there could be things that you just might have been doing majority of your life or all your life and just have never been told like, hey, yeah. that can people can think th uh, the wrong way about how you approach or, or, or interact with someone by yeah. doing that. so.
I think um, one thing too to make note of is like when I say like self assessment, not even a self assessment, but also just like assess your team. You know, like what do you, how do you feel about you know things that are going on with your team? How do you feel about you all's progress and that kind of thing? And you know, from there that could definitely you know spark the conversation of how can we make this better? Yeah. Yeah. Common sense is not so common. It's, and sometimes really you really nice. need common sense to be able yeah. to pick up on, on folks. And, and also what's common sense to you may not be common sense to somebody else. Uh, yeah. Um, and in our and field, that, there are some goes, people that are robots. Yeah. And that just goes back to um, the complexity of humans in general. Um, just yeah. because um, we're all a product of our environments, uh, whether that be your home life, your school life, or your work life. And, so my next uh, point, JB, hit it home. Hit it. Go ahead. See, we're Go here. Ahead. We're here. I'm excited. Um, Go ahead. And so burr, 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 burr. we have to be able to take those <laughs> two out. Um, and I say this a lot in reference to um, things outside of work, um, where it's, you have to take into account where that person may be coming from with their point of view, um, because those very important views is what makes a team work. And so that goes back into your patience and your listening of being willing to listen to that person's point of view and vice versa. So, yeah. And the, the, my favorite part of your statement that you just did, that you just made was, the, you know, um, you, when you're saying like, you know, we all come from different places. And so one of the best things you can do uh, on your team to help, in my opinion, to help improve like your soft skills is just to know more about your team members and those who are yes. you're around when they're if they're doing happy hour or lunches or any type of thing, uh, party lunch or whatever. Like, hey, what school did you go to? Oh, where'd you live before that? Because uh, re- there there's things regionally that if they live in a certain area, they might be more likely to do certain things. You know, mm-hmm. if you know, if they're from certain places, they might be more likely to drive a heavy Chevy and not <laughs> versus, you know, a, a, a Tesla or something else of the sort. But like, but no, just knowing, knowing where people are coming from, knowing their background is mm-hmm. not to like, and that, and that's not you making assumptions. That's you. That's you learning more about them. Like if to me, I learn the most about my friends and stuff when you go back to, to their home. Like you're like, oh, this like makes sense. It's not saying, and it's not saying that you're necessarily that you don't have growth from where you're from but it's just like mm-hmm. it's foundational to who you are like true there are some things mm-hmm. about me that are never going to leave because of where i'm from and things that happened mm-hmm. to me when i grew up for and like you know from um from me like you you'll learn a lot about me from going to my hometown going into my you know talking to my family and and learning things so definitely like where we come from does matter and so um and I mean, not... that can also show up like, uh, not mean, didn't mean to cut you off, but that can also show up like at a person's desk. Um, you just take a time, take the time to, you know, look at the things that this person has deemed important enough to bring to work and share with their coworkers. Um, that makes them feel comfortable. Uh, you can, you know, use that as well. Not at everyone's desk. <laughs> Some people's desk, they're like, I'm not staying here long. <laughs> I mean, granted, that's exactly how my desk is at work. Some people's desk are uh, like, uh, and that says finger. nothing about work. It just, it's just that I'm like, I'm not sharing nothing with you guys. Uh, <laughs> there are See, I like like there's no way it can be dirty like it's just an empty desk. <laughs> See, I learned, I learned from experience to always pack light. <laughs> Well, that's because you're a hopper. If you have not listened to our last episode, go to episode, go episode one to hear about why Clarence doesn't have a lot of stuff at his desk. Uh, now, nah, but I will say to add on to both of y'all's point about a person, you know, you think about it again, the complexity, complexity of a human being. I mean, one person, you just don't know whether it be a long term, short term, or however you know they're spending their life has experienced so much. So, so the next point that I guess the question I have for everyone is: All right, you have these soft skills. Do you think that people, those who are introvert versus extrovert, are are better or worse at like as far as like having soft skills, like 
their level of soft skills, their level of awareness, situation awareness? Um, um, I think it's not a better or worse um, thing in particular. It's more of which skills they deem important versus the others. Um, because like an introvert is more likely to be a great listener. <laughs> yeah. Right. An awesome listener because they're just like, you know, taking it all in. Then I'm going to analyze it, figure out what my next move is, and we're going to go from there. Whereas ever... extrovert may just be like, they may, an extrovert may be that person that we were talking about earlier, which is the one that's just in overdrive. And it's like, all right, we got to rein them back in. Um, See, my, my only issue with the in- introvert is you don't know if they're actually listening. They might just have a blank stare. <laughs> <laughs> this, no, this is true. So they, they they like, to you right now. Okay? <laughs> thinking about <laughs> something else for sure. But yeah, that's like, true. I've been, I've, um, and I, I'm an introvert for sure, but I can fake it for a yeah. while. Really? Like, I did not believe that. I'm going to take a big nap after this. Uh, don't worry. Um, well, I know yeah. you all. So for me, it's like if I know, yeah. like, if, like if I if I'm around a whole bunch of people I don't know, and I have to like, like conferences, like for me going to a conference and like when they say, oh, you know, go out and meet folks, like that is work for me. Like I'm, I'm, it's not just natural, and I'm drained. Yeah. And that might be some extroverts might, I guess, technically, like that's one of the measurements they say. Like mm-hmm. if you go around other people, and mm-hmm. um, whether you gain you're gaining energy. Yeah, or you feeling drained. I always feel like I always feel drained. <laughs> really? <laughs> For oh, sure. Yes. Don't let the football and all the other stuff fool you. I'm like, I thought you hold on, Clarence. You're supposed to know this. We talked about it. I mean, this. I I know, <laughs> but it just I guess you're right, because I know you, it just seems like that just doesn't fit you who you are. And kind of mm-hmm. seeing how you interact with a lot of people, it just feels like you're naturally able to just adapt. Oh, I'm definitely draining. Like it's it's not gonna last for, for, for so long. <laughs> like I have no problem talking to people at all. Like I'm not stage right. And like giving speeches in front of thousands of people or anything. Like I'm fine with all that. And we're kind of like blurring lines between different topics. I feel it. But yes. um, <laughs> look at JB. Try, she's I'm the drive. I'm I'm in drive. She's trying to look at <laughs> overdrive. Trying to pull you back. <laughs> but um, but uh, but you know for for sure I'm definitely it definitely is draining. So. Yeah. Um, but then again, like if I don't talk to people for a long time, like then after a while, I will be like, huh, I'm gonna go out and talk to somebody for a little bit. So I don't know, like us in this pandemic. Um, exactly. for me, um, I'm usually okay with you know having time myself and all that stuff, but during this pandemic, I'm like, all right, um, it's starting to get a little too much. I've <laughs> I've had way too much time to myself, like just um, randomly and, texting us, you know. Right, like, hey doing? guys, uh, what's going <laughs> on? Um, like the my FaceTime like percentage has definitely skyrocketed mm-hmm. since this uh, pandemic has started, yeah. um, which is still not the same as you know being face to face with people. But you know, it's kind of like, well, that's that's my first option, so that's what I'm going to go with, um, type of thing. But back to the topic. Um, I feel like Shay, uh, she's reeling us in. Yeah, you know, I'm trying to bring it back in. You, you were reeling us in last time, so um, I felt like I should take on that job this time. Um, when it comes to introvert extroverts in the office, um, it's kind of a toss up on which skills a person deems important, um, and because a introvert may deem computer um, communication as being important but they may not voice a lot of things, but they want you to communicate with them and, you know, start that conversation with them. Whereas an extrovert is like, oh no, I need you to talk to me. Like, I I really need you to say something. And um, that kind of goes into the drive and uh, communication aspect. Whereas that extroverted person may just need to, um, hone in on a little bit more patience to interact with that introverted person um, and vice versa. So, yeah. JB, are you introvert or extrovert? I am. I just found out I am, what is it? Ambivert, which is, um, I kind of blurred the lines. Yeah. Yeah. That's me. That's Um, me. (laughs) (laughs) Um, (laughs) I actually, um, 
I took the test too. I've taken the test a couple times, yeah. the Myers Briggs uh, test, and nice. um, burr, burr, burr. I was waiting for to say that. <laughs> and she's getting JP getting that, all of them. <laughs> with that assessment, um, depending on the time of day and the mood that I'm in, uh, I can be considered an introvert or an extrovert, and both of those are usually at the fifty percent mark, uh, or very close to it. Just to pretty much say that you're kind of threading that line a little bit. <laughs> Clarence, are you introvert or extrovert? I am. So when when I first started adulthood, I was more, I was on that line because <laughs> that was, I was on that line years ago. Yeah, what? I was I was I was on that line. Of, I think I was a, I was an introvert when I was in high school. Totally introverted high school, but when I got to college. I transformed into an extrovert, and uh, since then, you know, it's been it's just He's been that. And I know, I, <laughs> <laughs> I know. Like for instance, I feel like the pandemic has really like hurt me because, like, like when I'm on my walks in the morning, you know, I'm that guy. Like I'm smiling, I'm waving, <laughs> I'm saying good morning, and, and like you know, a lot of people that I pass aren't on that same energy. I and of course, you know, weird. Like, yeah. <laughs> there's a guy actually though. I started saying good morning to him, and he would just kind of cut me off. But the other morning, he beat me to it. So I thought maybe I traded some energy that you, you know. You yeah. kind of warm down. That's all. He's yeah. just like I know, he's just <laughs> he knows what he's boy. getting now. Clarence, based on what you just said. Um, about you know being an extrovert, how do you think it's helped you during the course of your career? Uh, during the course of my career, I feel like it's definitely been helpful because uh, a lot of the teams I've worked with, uh, it's been full of introverts or there's like a fine line between introverts and extroverts. Um, and so what I've tried to do is use it to really bring people out of their shell in a way because I feel like that helps, you know, team balance. That also just, you know, it helps with team dynamics. I mean, I know everybody's comfortable in their own space and they have their way of how they handle things. But I've learned using my extroverted talent to, you know, bring the best out of people, <laughs> bring the best out of people. You know, I think that burr, that, burr, is burr. <laughs> that is definitely extroverted talent. talent. <clears throat> That, that has definitely helped. Have talent? No, they, have talent. <laughs> they have talent, but it definitely helps with team dynamics and just team flow uh, mm -hmm. for me. Like okay. That. Like that. Terrence, what about you? I mean, you said that you were introvert, extrovert, but how does that help with, you know, being at work and uh, things like that? So for me, even though I'm an introvert, like, even though I'm naturally uh, an introvert, that's why I think that, you know, I kind of do blur lines. Like, I've, and I have to credit, like, my parents for this. Like, even though I was, uh, like, didn't mind, like, like keep, keep, keeping to myself and was introverted, like, growing up, my parents fo forced me to play sports. They forced me to uh, go to different, like, social events and stuff, interact with people that I don't, I don't know. They forced me to basically, uh, like get out there and make speeches in front of, of people and and just like to go and do things. I think sports probably like really is what probably was like the driving force for like helping me to like just get used to being able to interact with uh, folks from so many different backgrounds. And so but in the work for like how it's helped me in the workplace, I think like I, I know how to turn it on. And one of the things I do is just before I go to work, I just um, I do like have a little quiet time to myself to just you know to whatever's going on before i step into step into work it's like now it's where <clears throat> whether it's like praying or just just having like moments of silence to just like become centered and become present folk and like to just and that's that's how i i'm able to like focus going into work and then so regardless of what's going on whether i'm tired that's how i gain gain my energy and gain my focus to, to go in um into the office and another thing that helps me too is always have goals for the day for some reason for me writing things down makes it to where <laughs> i am not only uh more focused on what i'm there to do today but it also is like i'm focused on like the soft skills soft skills makes it there too like hey i want to um i want to uh meet and learn something new about this person this person this person i want to um 
uh, I, uh, get something out of this person as far as like uh, they have a resource or they have something that they're doing, reach out to people. Like I just naturally, I, I benefited the most from being able to get along with others. Like and that's where the teamwork comes in. Whether they're on my, the team for my product or just a team in my organization or a person in my organization. Being social and having like positive experiences and relationships with people, it just benefits. It just works, and mm-hmm. like that's the core for um, for uh, for soft skills, you know. And um, that leaves a lasting impression too, for yeah. sure. Okay. I'll say for me, um, dealing with it in the workplace, um, as Terrence says, dealing with it. Um, <laughs> for me. Uh, I tend to gain energy just from the people that I'm around just because I know that I have like having that interaction with my coworkers is important throughout the day. Um, but definitely when I come home, it's like, all right, now it's time to rest, relax, uh, regroup from the day, uh, having your moment of meditation or whatever. Um, so yeah, while I'm at work, um, I won't say I'm the life of the party, uh, but uh, you are. I'm that person. We know that. that uh, we, we already know. Don't even uh, try to dance around. I'm it. not trying to say. You know, <laughs> I'm that not, person, but I'm that person. <laughs> always you know, by the I'm water not cooler. Saying I'm like the queen of the crowd or anything, but um, but yeah, I tend to get along with uh, pretty much everyone that's on my team at work. Um, like, I haven't really had any negative um, moments. There have been moments where um, myself and a coworker may have um, just been two passing ships where we just weren't understanding each other. But that just meant that, you know, we had to take the time, which goes back to the patience of um, and listening to uh, really explain what we were talking about. Um, to make sure that we're on the same page with things. Because it may just be that uh, it may be a difference of technologies or um, a difference of algorithms or just an overall how we plan to do um, a certain thing. And so it just, that's basically how I've done it. It's just being willing to put myself out there to have those conversations. But I will say um, in me going to new offices at a time, being the introvert that I am, I'm more of the laid back, let me be quiet, let me, you know, fill out the room type of thing. And then once I'm comfortable, then I become this person that I am now. Um, so, yeah. That situational awareness is everything. I feel I feel like that being quiet at first is the situational awareness. You have to feel, you got to feel things out. You don't know, you don't know what you're walking into for sure. Yeah, I'm and, the total uh, opposite. I like to set the tone. <laughs> set the tone. <laughs> he set comes tone. in blazing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm that shining star before, before <laughs> when I walk in. <laughs> but that's pretty, that's that's good. For, that's that's good. So, um, soft skills. Anything else? Anybody else wants to hit on um, hit on before we wrap things up? Uh, one thing that I did think of uh, while Jasmine was talking was that. Um, I feel like soft skills totally get tested when you go around someone who has no idea what soft skills are. And that's when you really dig deep to find like what are how what your real strengths are with certain uh, soft skills. Yeah, definitely. Um, Just because they have like especially for a person who has no situational awareness to really pick up on, um, like Terrence brought up, the nonverbal communication. Being able to pick up on those things and read the room um, really helps out in certain situations because if you start going down a certain lane and um, and you're not picking up on what everybody else is feeling in the room just by their nonverbal communication, you may be going completely left field from what they really want. But since you're, you know, not... Um, looking to understand um it it doesn't help the situation and so as a person um that consciously thinks about those soft skills you know being that person that can rein them back in and let them know hey you know and make sure you do it in a polite manner um because yeah, you also have to take into effect of people's feelings um and things like that so yeah yeah that's very important i'll say i know for me my soft skills 
they have been strengthened by a few experiences that where the the certain individuals just tested, you know, like, you know, not not just put your foot in the water. I mean, put your toe in the water, but I'm talking like just plunge, you know. <laughs> but that's the beauty of working with people. Yeah. For sure. For sure. But I think I think JB, you uh one statement you said that is like that stands out for sure is that you know you have to be careful how you respond because you, people have feelings you know that's what this is really when it really comes down to is just hey make sure everybody's good with their feelings right yeah maybe you not. know one one <laughs> thing that uh to piggyback on that is something i heard a long time ago uh in this men's group that i was a part of uh you know the difference between reaction and responding you know that you know is, is big because if you react, burr, 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 you, know, burr, you weren't gonna go without getting one. I was good. I, like I was that. hoping. I was waiting for it. I was gonna give it to myself if you didn't. But <laughs> I was good. But he's like, finally, I got one. That was good. <laughs> but yeah, that you know, that's a huge. There's a huge difference between the two. Uh, yeah. And then, and in that, you know, that comes with different results. So that is good. I'm, I'm cutting off there. That was yeah, too good. That's that's. It's too good. good to add on to. Just leave it right there where it's at. I like it. Yep. So um, once again, you all, thank you for joining in to another episode of the Devs Like Us podcast. If you have not subscribed to the podcast, uh, do it now. If uh, you haven't subscribed to the, the YouTube channel, do that now. Um, all of the resources, as JB likes to remind me, will be in the show notes. And that's universal across all platforms. Um, so my name is Terrence. I'm Clarence. I knew that was going to happen. I knew that was going to happen. <laughs> it was perfect last time. I said, how is it so perfect last time? All right. I'm Terrence. <laughs> We're in Use your soft skills. Use your soft skills. Who goes next? Okay. Wait. Go ahead. I, I'll go next. Go ahead. No, no you. Terrence. <laughs> Terrence, you got to start us off. Go for it. I just started it off. I'm keeping that. No. <laughs> no, My name's Terrence. I'm JB. And I'm Clarence. All right, we're out, y'all. Thank you. Thank you.